In this video, we show how to interact with an SQL database using Langchain and OpenAI. We simply talk to the language model, and that will convert our query to valid SQL commands and execute them on the target database to find the answer to our question. We'll start by importing the load.env package to load the API keys into the environment variables and reading the OpenAI API key from the environment. The key is stored in a .env hidden file located next to the Jupyter notebook that I have in this folder. So the two files, the hidden file.env and the Python notebook, must be in the same folder. The argument of the load.env is the file name that has the key. And then running this will store the OpenAI API key in this variable. Then I will import OpenAI and create the language model with a temperature of zero so that there is no variability or not much variability. Verbosity is set to true so that we see the intermediate steps. And let's run this cell. Let's also test the language model by invoking a simple query. So let's say, hi, what is your name? And see what the response is. If you're enjoying this video, please support us by subscribing to our channel and giving us a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. It means a lot to us. Next, I will import the SQL database from Langchain Community Utilities and then create the database from the URI. So this is the path to the database file on my local disk. So to find it, we need to create a notebook folder in the directory where my notebook is and place the database file in there. In the same directory, there should be a folder called Notebooks. And if I go into that Notebooks folder, where the name is the same as in here, in this URI path, then inside that, there should be a file with an extension of DB, which is the database file. So this name should match this part of the path of the URI. Let's now test if this is a valid database. For this to work, you need to have the Esclite installed and running. So install it if it is not installed. Read the database file using this command and then execute this command to list all the table names. So these are the table names in this database. Later on, we will achieve the same list of names in the notebook by interacting with the language model. Let's run this cell to create the database. Here, this is my database. And then to get the database table info, I can run this function. These are the tables. For example, this is the customer table and the columns are inside. Or, this is another table, artist, which is listed here. Let's move on. In this tutorial, the idea is to be able to search through this extended database file and retrieve the information that we need by just talking to the language model. Next, from the SQL, I will import the SQL database chain and then build the chain using this LLM. that is defined here. And the database 
that is created here. And also we set the verbosity to true so that we see the intermediate steps. Let's now invoke the database chain. So let's talk to the database. Let's say for example, how many employees are there? So the way it works is that the chain will convert my query into a SQL command and then execute it using the sglite. And then it will store the result into this AI message. This is the query part. And this is the result or the response from the language model. It is stored in the result key. We can achieve the same number by running this SQL command directly inside SQLite. To see that, let's copy this piece of the command and go to the SQLite, and then run the command directly there. We just need a semicolon to run this command. So if I run this, I will get the same number 8 as responded by the language model. This command here can have slight typos, which after execution by Esclite will raise some errors. To avoid such errors, I'm modifying this line of code and adding another parameter. Use query checker and set it to true. Here is the explanation for this parameter. Sometimes the SQL command generated by the language model can have small mistakes. In those cases, this parameter will use LLM to fix the potential small typos in the SQL command. So this parameter checks for the correctness of the SQL command before executing it. So now if we run the command, Especially when the SQL commands are long and complex, this option is important. Let's now test the database chain with the new parameter. So this long and relatively complex command is generated without a typo. Here is another invocation of the database chain, for example. Let's list the names of all the tables in this database. So basically, it will result in this same list that we derived earlier by directly running the SQL command inside the SQLite environment. So the chain generates this SQL command and then runs it. And here are the names of the tables. Now let's say I need all the column names of this table, media type. So here, it generated the corresponding SQL command and then executed it. So it has two columns, the name and the media type ID. Now let's say, for example, how many unique names are there in the name column in the media? It generated the corresponding command, and the result was returned in the corresponding key, so there are five unique names in the column in the given table. Now, if I execute the same command directly in Esclite, I get the number 5. As another example, let's ask the language model to list all the unique media types of the media type table. So this is this table, and I want to have the unique media types in that table,
And here is the result. MPEG audio file, protected AAC audio file, and the rest. I hope you have enjoyed this video. See you next time. To get the source code of this tutorial, go to apps.compu-flare.com and search for a pipeline that uses Langchain to talk to SQL databases. After getting the list of suggested pipelines, select this one from the drop-down menu. Here, the code blocks will be returned in the order that we execute them in the tutorial. Also, you can get live help from the chat AI. For example, you can ask to summarize the pipeline or ask questions about a particular code block. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please support us by clicking on the subscribe button, giving us a thumbs up, and spreading the word by telling your friends. See you next time.